to join us and sing that last line and let's just sing it and as we sing it give your attention to the lover of your soul who is standing right before you if it is true love it will take your time and it will take your attention not just the attention of your face but the attention of your heart and I want us to sing it again and declare make a solemn oath to him that we love him more than anything that he can give us more than anything that life has to offer our love for him prioritizes him esteems him above everything else that this world can offer more than anything can we sing all together as a family of faith lord i love you three more times declare lord i love Come from the depth of your being. Lord, I love you more than anything. More than job, more than houses, more than cars, more than material things. Lord, I love you. to soak in the next one minute just keep playing let the revelation of this song filter into your spirit Lord thank you for all that you have given me thank you for the prophecies thank you for miracles but I came to declare to you that I didn't follow you because of these things you are worth the following. You are worth chasing after. You are worth every drop of my blood. You are worth my life. I am and everything that you have given me is a sacrifice unto you. Lord, I declare that I love you. I love you. I truly love you. I love you enough to leave everything and follow you. Just close your eyes and be still in his presence. And let the love that is in this atmosphere saturate your soul. This service is mainly for somebody tonight. God wants to restore you to a place of devotion a place of true fellowship and love with him we don't seek God for things 
we seek God for him but it happens that the benefits are the things that he gives us but Lord we declare that nothing that you will ever give or have given to us will take your place absolutely nothing we lay all our crowns we lay our accolades our titles we lay every achievement in the flesh we lay it down before you you are everything you loved us when we were nothing you saw us in our state of wretchedness you died to rescue what was compared to dust you gave our lives a brand new meaning you redeemed us again and today we have become the praise of all the earth yet not I but Christ that lives in me I am yours I am your own Till the day you come back Jesus I am your own I am your own I am your own Till the day you will come Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you come back. Jesus, I am your own. You are my melody. You are my standard Till the day you come back Jesus, we are all You are my melody You are my standard Till the day you come back Jesus, I am your Just the voices on the keyboard I am your own I am your own Declare to him Till the day you will man. Jesus, I am your own Sing it tonight Till the day you come back <laughs> Jesus, I am your own You are swearing an oath You are making a declaration to me
of surrender to him I live to serve you all the rest of my days say I am your own I am your own to these words. You are my melody. You are my standard. Till the day you come man. Jesus, I am your Lord. You are my melody. You are my life. You are my standard Till the day you come back Jesus I Sing I am your own you sing it let everything that has competed or that is competing for the place of God in your life let it fall before him tonight I am your own let everything that threatens to take his place in your life fall before him the congregation and the strings I am your come on people of God lift your voice I am sing one more time declare I am your the Lord is all over this place tonight when we profess our love to him in worship he shows up he shows up in the capacity of his glory he comes and he overwhelms his people and he causes that we are raptured in his love I stand I stand in awe of you. We stand, we stand in awe. Just forget about every other distraction. Focus on Him. Holy God, to whom our praise is due. We stand in awe of you. We stand, we stand in awe of you. Thank you for your presence tonight. We stand on holy ground. Yeah, in awe of you, holy God, unto all praise is due. We stand in awe and majesty, worship His majesty. Unto he, Jesus, be all. 
glory, honor, and praise, majesty, king of authority, Jesus, you die, come glorify, Christ Jesus, our King. Lord, we stand on holy ground. We stand in awe of your presence. That very presence of the throne. We thank you because in you we live, we move, and we have our being. Thank you tonight for saturating this place with your love. And those listening online far away. Thank you because you have brought us under this atmosphere of your spirit. Thank you for the workings of your spirit in our lives and in our midst. We adore you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We bless you. We lift our hands to the great I am who was and who is and is to come we lift our hands to the great I am who can compare Lord, initiate us tonight into an experience that will command transformation, that will command change, that will set us on another pedestal with you. We honor your presence. Lord, we bow and worship you. Lord, we bow and worship. Lord, we bow. Lord, we bow. And we cast the crowns before your throne, Lord. We From the depth of our hearts to the bottom of our souls, we bow tonight. Raise your voice, declare, we bow, we bow, we bow, and worship you. We cast our crowns right before your throne, we bow. Protocol to his presence. We cast our crown before your throne. Come on and we bow, come on and bow, come on and bow, come on and bow. And worship. We bow, we bow, we bow, we bow, Lord. Time. We 
you mean it. We bow before your throne, Lord. We Thank you, Father. Thank you because your presence transforms. And that's why we bow in worship. Not just our knees, but our very heart. We come under the influence of your government tonight. We declare that you reign. You reign abundantly. You reign supreme. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, may no life here present live the same. Let us be raptured in your glory. Let us enjoy the splendor that comes in your presence. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Be seated. Thank you. One of the things that worship does is that worship helps your soul to be still. That's the reason why we do what we do. It's not because we want to waste time. There's actually no, no even enough time. But I, I want to deliberately teach us step by step the protocols that gives you access into the very presence of God. And that allows consistent interaction between your spirit and the spirit of God. When you are in the presence of God, what worship does, one of the things it does is that it steals your soul. It quietens your soul. Some of us are too noisy in our minds that we can't hear when he speaks. You cannot hear God or hear from God until there is peace. So when we worship in his presence, worship helps you focus on him. Listen, worship helps you focus on him because the role of worship is to bring to the center of your focus, the center of your imagination, the very one that you worship. So when we worship, your mind concentrates on him and him alone. And every distraction melts away. It is at that point that you can have fellowship with him. It's at that point you can interact. 
It's at that point you can hear from him. And it's at that point that you can truly experience communion with the Spirit. The Bible says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you for how long? Forever. So you have to learn this. It has to be part of you. You don't do it because you are a man of God. You do it because it is fundamental for every Christian. There has got to be that stillness in your soul. Many distractions these days. We live in a world plagued by distractions. The Bible says there are, as it were, in, in the world, many voices. But for you to distinguish the voice of the lover of your soul, then your soul must be brought into consciousness. A place of rest. That's actually a kind of death to self. Because it's not easy to quiet in your mind. It's only when you get to that point that you truly can hear from him and interact. That is when prayer becomes enjoyable. That's when prayer becomes pleasurable. Because at that point, you lose focus on time. You lose focus on the noise around you. And you are right there in connection to your heavenly father. That was the secret of Jesus. The Bible says oftentimes he will withdraw himself. Wasn't it okay for him to pray anywhere? Why did he have to choose a place? The reason is that your prayer cannot be potent enough until you observe this protocol of stillness. Until all the noise and the distractions around and within you is quieted. Sometimes the very solution to the problems around you are within you. But you need to be quiet. Everything is speaking. And I fear that we are giving attention to every other thing else than him. Now friends, if you want to walk with God, you must learn this. It must become part and parcel of your prayer life. It must become part and parcel of your fellowship. That is when you begin to enjoy intimacy with him. It is at that point that you can sit down and wisdom is downloaded to you. <laughs> yes. That's the secret of prophets. They have, by reason of use, been able to train their mind to a place of stillness. If you just can't be still... If you just can't be still. The Bible says be still and know. That means there is an amount of revelation. There is a dispersion of knowledge that comes to a soul that is still. Not a noisy soul. Lord we bow and worship you. There's a lady that God showed me he will heal. You have a pain. I don't know if it's your jaw or your, your, your teeth. But I see a pain. I believe it's your tooth. Like toothache or something. And it's, the pain is it's affecting one side of your jaw. I saw you this afternoon. And the Lord told me he was going to heal you here tonight. And I just want you, whoever you are, just focus and allow the Lord to take that pain away. And so we say that you are good and all the miracles you've done has brought us joy. And we are changed and all the hope we have we place in you right now. Father, we declare. Father, we declare. That we love you tonight. We declare everlasting love. 
I don't want you to come out, but I want you to watch the miracle that will happen. I saw in a vision, I saw your pockets, and they're completely empty. And there's a challenge of financial, or there's a challenge, financial challenge. And it has become a burden to you. But God is telling me to tell you, He's about to do a miracle such as you have never seen. And before you step out of this door, there's going to be supernatural supply. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What do we do today? Okay, let's just do something. Psalms 18, verse 28. Let's just get to the word in 30 minutes and then we'll pray. I'd like you to know that just sitting here tonight, your life has been altered. Your life has been changed. You need to understand that the presence of God is everything. All you need to do is sit under that atmosphere. The atmosphere of His presence is intelligent in itself. When it comes on a man, He scans every insufficiency. And it brings the perfection that exists in Christ into that individual. You don't need to tell God that you don't have money. Just sit under his presence. While you are giving him attention, he's talking to somebody about your need. You know, the world system, they've developed something called artificial intelligence that your phone can predict for you. There is much more super intelligence in the presence of God. It's not just a mist or a fog. It's not a feeling. It's a person. I was praying a few days ago. This happens to me very rare. That when I pray, God begins to give me prayer points. It, it's very rare when it happens. If it happens, I spend so much time to pray that prayer point. And I think that's how prayer should be. You don't go with prayer points. Though the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. But true prayer that stems into communion and allows interaction between humanity and divinity is such that you begin to pray until you break into the depth of your spirit where the voice of God is. And then God begins to pray through you. It's at that point that strategic prophetic intercession can happen. And so one of those days I was praying and a prayer point came to my heart. And I think we'll pray it before we leave. And the prayer point is, Oh Lord, let the weight of your glory rest upon every insufficiency and every lack in my life. <laughs> well, let me save you. If I enter that, that's a teaching for a whole meeting. That's what I call a general purpose machine gun. You know what it means for the glory of God to rest? Except the ark in the Old Testament, there was nothing that could carry his glory. So what it means is that the glory of God will rest on and break because it's too weighty. So when the glory of God comes upon a man, Every lack and insufficiency collapses under that weight. The Bible says that our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding weight. 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 
when it rests on your life everything that is insufficient or that looks like lack that does not conform to the completeness that is in Christ collapses under that atmosphere and all of a sudden perfection happens that's when you sit in a meeting or you go to a prayer meeting and by the time you finish you check your phone the things that you would have prayed for the answers are right there before you amen so i pray that we are going to i think we'll pray that prayer before we go in jesus name you're welcome to pneumatic god bless you tonight and i i trust that god will really really talk to us in jesus name you know recently god began to talk to me and many of us know the story of elijah the bible says in first kings chapter 19 just put it on the psalms we are coming there because tonight if i have a title for what i want to teach then maybe the title is downloading the mind of god in prayer if it's if there's a title for my message is tonight i want to teach you how you can break through ignorance and hear from god at all times the Bible says it, Elijah was running away from Jezebel and he went 40 days in, onto Horeb, the mount of God. And Elijah, Elijah didn't know he was going through a transition. The Bible says while he was at the cave on the mountain, God commanded him to stand outside. And scripture had it that there was a wind that passed, but God was not in it. Bible says there was an earthquake but God was not there it said there was fire right but God was not there and then there was a still small voice notice that these were instances or happenings by which God had spoken to or revealed himself to Elijah in the previous chapter God answered him by fire right and be, the reason why the manifestations of God were physical in the Old Testament. Listen, the reason why the manifestations of God were exclusively physical in the Old Testament, even though the Old Testament and all that happened there is nothing compared to the glory that is in the New. So the fact that it was spectacular doesn't mean it was stronger. The reason is because man hadn't the spirit of God as at that time. So man could not understand God from his plane, from his perspective. Because John chapter 4 verse 24 says God is, God is what? Talk to me now. God is what? Spirit. So you see that God had to reduce his operations. He had to step down his modus operandi. Because man was a physical being. Man was, as at that time, susceptible to the flesh and to the things of this life. The spiritual senses of man that time was dead or hibernated. So it's not like God really wanted all those physical manifestations, no. But the reason was because that was the only way he could communicate to a creature that has lost touch with him. You know when the Bible says all have seen and come short of the glory of God. You know what it means? In the Garden of Eden, what happened with Adam was that Adam had the Spirit of God in him. And because of that, Adam had access to interact with God, who was spirit, and to interact with the spirit realm. And then God clothed Adam with his glory. That's why the Bible says God planted him in the garden that is in Eden. The word garden is a place of relaxation. It's a place for intimacy and pleasure. Eden means my delight or my pleasure. In other words, God kept Adam in the core place of his presence. So when Adam moved in the Garden of Eden, it was the glory of God that was moving. 
That was the reason why wild animals could not hurt him. The reason was because that glory upon him and around him tamed the animals. But when man fell, he lost all of that. And he was subjected to this physical realm. So God had to make all his manifestations physical. And so when there was fire, there was wind, there was earthquake, Elijah thought that this will carry the voice of God to him. But Elijah didn't know that there was a transition going on in the spirit. That more than just miracles and supernatural acts, God wanted the fellowship with his people to be restored. You remember that in the previous chapter, chapter 18, when he was calling down fire, this was his prayer. He said, let them know that you have sent me and that this day you have turned the hearts of the children back to you. That was what God sought. It was not about the miracles. But the Bible says in the midst of all that, God was not there. And that likens to our generation. Our generation is filled with all kinds of distraction. We are so used to the physical. We are so used to the noise. We are so used to activity. We are used to spectacular manifestations. And they are good. But many of us have tied our faith in God to spectacular events. So that if God doesn't move like that, it's not of God. The question now is then why did he put his spirit inside of you? And if you train your physical senses to get used to interacting with God through physical manifestations, what will happen to the real you which is your spirit? Because this body is a house. Hmm. Wise men understand what I'm saying this night. This body is a house. Many of us are trying to live our Christian life and our Christian experience interacting with God with this body. But one day this body will drop dead and the real you which is spirit will translate to the realm where God is. The question will be, would your spiritual senses be so developed to interact with God in that realm? So Elijah like this generation was used to noise miracles prophecy and all that is good i mean we see god do it here time after time and we bless god for last sunday right how many of you enjoyed last sunday it was great but let me tell you that's not all all of that can happen and god may not be in it we can host miracle service back to back every Sunday and sinners will walk in and walk out, not changed. We can host those kind of meetings and move in the gifts of the Spirit. And people will come with addictions, bound with habits and still go out the same, not transformed. People can come with anger issues and still go like that. Have you noticed that meetings like that has very little impact on your soul? So that was Elijah. But the Bible says God came through a still small voice. Another scenario like that was in the New Testament. There was revival happening, Acts of the Apostle in Jerusalem. And everybody was enjoying the move of God there. But they had forgotten that God had told them that you will be my witnesses. Jesus told them you will be my witnesses here in Jerusalem. Did he say it will end in Jerusalem? No. He said then to Samaria and to the ends. In other words, it must spread. But they saw the move of God in Jerusalem. They were happy about it. And they felt, let us just camp here. Let us just build doctrines around this. This is all that we can experience by the Holy Spirit. That was why when Peter went to the house of Cornelius... And the Gentiles were baptized with the Spirit. When he went back, Jewish Christians still quarreled him. Because it was a strange sight to them. They felt that all that they had experienced the first few chapters was all that there is. Friend, let me tell you the truth. God can move today and by tomorrow he's no longer where he was. 
Many of us don't know what we call the move of God. God moves. God is not static in his operations. His, his name is G-O-D. The first two letters, G-O, go. He's a going God. He moves. So you can experience God yesterday like this. And by the time it's today, you come to that place, God is no longer there. He has moved. Just like God had moved his operation. Just like God has moved what he was doing. And Elijah was not aware. That was the reason why God had to tell him, well, you can't continue for me again. So go and anoint Elisha. Anoint Hazel. Anoint Jehu. But for you, you have come to an end. Why? Because Elijah will not transit with God when he was moving. And if we don't begin to build a Christianity that is flexible to the move of the Spirit, if we don't begin to build a Christian, spiritual Christian character that is susceptible to the voice of the Spirit, the Bible says, let him that had ear hear what the Spirit saith, not what the Spirit said. Because God can say something yesterday and change it today. It doesn't mean he lied. Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Kill him on the mountains, I will show you. Three days later, God told him, touch that boy not. Question is, did God lie? Did God change his word? No. But you need to understand that for change to happen, God must send his word. So for every season, as you walk with God, there is a word that propels you into another place. That's the reason why when you started your Christian experience, you used to have dreams. And God speaks to you through dreams. And now the dreams are not there. And because you are not having the dreams, you feel you are, no, you are now less a Christian than you were. No. God was only trying to shut down that spiritual sense because it has been activated. So that he can activate another one. Because if you only have one sense active you are still vulnerable i'm talking to mature people tonight I'm not talking to everybody and so this christian experience is like a wave on the ocean that a surfer goes to surf on and then he can be surfing on a very high wave but as soon as that wave is coming down he watches for the next wave that arises because the fact that God is no longer operating like you or the fact that other people don't operate like you doesn't mean they are less a Christian like you. And the problem we have in this generation, that's why many people are deceived. Many Christians are deceived. is because we don't understand the ways of the Spirit. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind the power at work in you everything in obedience to that's how dynamic he is in his move that's why we don't follow miracles. We don't follow prophecies. We don't follow signs. The Bible says the signs will follow us. We follow the leadership of the Spirit. And as we follow the leading of the Spirit, our followership becomes the very change of the season. So the signs around us is to educate unbelievers that God has moved. Just like Nigeria is about to transit into a new season. But if you look at the news, you will think that this country may not survive as one by the end of this year. But forget what people are post, post, placing on, 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 on what, what you call it, social media and all of that. Let me tell you, Nigeria is about to transit. There's about to be a reconfiguration, I'm, I'm telling you. In fact, some of you don't know that. You see all these killings happening. Let me just take you, it's, this is not even deep prophecy. This is something you can prove from the Bible. If you are a student of the word of God, this is something you can understand. That every time saviors are born, herods and pharaohs arise. So when you see killings in different places, it's because the next generation that will determine the political, military and, and, and civil terrain of this country in the spirit realm have been born. 
But because Satan doesn't understand the move of God, let him kill everywhere. Oh, come on. That's why you see, with all these things that have been happening, we are just relaxed. I tell you, there's about to be a massive shift in this country. I told you these things at the beginning of the year. I told you. But if you are the one that listens to, if you are led by the news, you pray in tongues, but you are still led by the news. Why are you praying? You come to church, but you are still led by others. You see, let me tell you something, friends. Pay the price to hear God for yourself. Hmm? Yes. Then let me see how we can help us with that in the next few minutes. And so these guys in Acts of the Apostles didn't know that God was already shifting. That the entrance of Paul the Apostle and Barnabas was a sign that God was changing. And then they had built doctrines around the move of God in Jerusalem and they were comfortable. Meanwhile, God was already moving the gospel from that place to the ends of the earth. So when God allowed persecution, they thought it was the devil. Though they didn't know that God allowed it because it was true persecution that the gospel was spread. And we have to be careful in the church that we don't turn a movement to a monument. Oh, you didn't hear me. Let me tell you something. The way I walk with God is such that if today God speaks to me through an audible voice on my right ear, tomorrow I don't go to him expecting that. And as you rise higher with God, he takes more simple approach in speaking to you such that you will say, it's my mind that is talking to me. <laughs> but the Bible says we have the mind of who? Let's... let's Let's do it in a didactic form now so that we can go. Psalms 18, verse 28 and 29. Akarabashi kaibalando. For thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Can you give us a new King James? For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness next verse for by you i can run against a troop by my god i can leap over a wall first of all notice he says you will light my lamp what lamp proverbs 20 verse 27 says the spirit of man is the lamp of the lord let me explain your configuration for you that your spirit which is the real you is like a candle it's supposed to be a light bearer, isn't it? When we talk about light in the realm of the spirit, it refers to knowledge, it refers to revelation, it refers to enlightenment. Anything that helps you escape from ignorance. Are we together? It refers to realities. And so your spirit is like a candle. But you see, a candle without fire on it, can it shine in darkness? No. So the psalmist says, you will light my lamp. In other words, there is something the Holy Spirit will do to your spirit. So that your spirit becomes a light bearer. And that light that comes upon your spirit, which comes from the Holy Spirit, extinguishes darkness, darkness of ignorance, darkness of all kinds and brings you to a conscious awareness of the purposes and the dealings of God. He said, for you will light my lamp. The Lord God will light my darkness. Next verse. For by you, because of this activity, because of this supernatural visitation of light coming on my spirit, he says, on the strength of that knowledge that I receive from you, by that, I can leap over a wall. You know that's physically not possible. There's no man that can leap over a wall. Some of you went to secondary schools that were boarding house and you were skilled in jumping fence. Say amen. amen. Uh, if you said amen, you were, you were there. FGC. Huh? 
John fence. Thank God for salvation. So the Bible says, by you I leap over a wall. Physically impossible. And by you I can run through a troop. Physically impossible. What will give a man superhuman, supernatural qualities? For you will light my lamp. You can have, you can be born again, but your candle needs to be lightened. That's why, and that's the thing about ministry. You see, when we stand here, you see, some of you don't know, you don't know that that is what God does. When a man of God stands to minister, what the anointing does is that lighting. A measure of God comes upon his spirit. And all of a sudden, he is upgraded to the realm of God. And he stands from the heavens and begins to see and speak pick impossible cases into possibility and for a moment you think he's not a human being he is his candle was just lightened his candle was lit for you will light my lamp the lord god will enlighten my darkness now this is old testament technology even with this this is old testament technology and the reason was because the spirit of God had not come to tabernacle in man. So every time that God would do anything through a man, the spirit of God would descend on that man. Not in his fullness, but like a breath. The Bible says, he breathed into Adam's nostril, the breath of life. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration, the word inspiration there is the word breath. The breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. So what made men prophets in the old testament what made men mighty in strength and judges what made a man a king in the old testament was that a measure of the spirit of god will come upon them just to activate a dimension of god that will find expression part time so the psalmy says this is my battle secret you light my lamp but guess what in the new testament the ball game changes a different ball game the bible says in first corinthians 6 verse 16 for he that is joined to the lord is one spirit with him no longer does god need to light you again why because by reason of the sacrifice of jesus the wall of partition has been torn apart we have been ransomed and bought by his blood and your spirit man has been made alive so the spirit of god comes to tabernacle in your spirit in the old testament only when the spirit comes in form of the anointing will they believe anything the man says but in the new testament the spirit of god doesn't just come as a measure of the anointing he comes to tabernacle in your spirit so your spirit and the holy spirit becomes one that means that the surest way you can hear from god is where through your spirit that's why the Bible says that the spirit beareth witness with our spirit. They have become one. So some, you, your, your spirit picks something in the realm of the spirit and speaks it to you. And you say, eh, it's my thought that is, I was just thinking. Which just thinking? Who gave you the ability to just think? You know why I'm stressing on this? Many of us, our problems are hinged around this. That even to even to find a wife to marry or find a husband is becoming difficult. They will come and meet you confirmation. I don't do that. Better enter transport, go to Kaduna, look for Apostle Eloy, wherever he is. And me, I don't do that. Confirmation. What other confirmation than the voice of the Holy Spirit inside of you? You need to understand when the Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord is one, one, one spirit. Meaning your spirit has become perfect in Christ. That means that there are about two to three ways by which God will primarily speak to an individual. Number one, through the spirit of God. And the spirit of God produces what we call the inward witness. The witness of the spirit. You just have a conviction inside of you. You just have a conviction. It's a feeling that is not natural. Have you, have you been there before? You say, I feel. But it's not a feeling that is in your mind or in your body. 
It's a feeling coming from the depths of you. Number two, your spirit, which produces what I call the inward voice. Now, many people don't know that there is a difference between the voice of the spirit and the voice of your spirit, even though both of them are one. If the spirit of God is speaking to you from within, this is how you distinguish his voice. The Bible says the Lord is that spirit, meaning that the Holy Spirit is Lord. So when he speaks, he speaks with authority, sovereign authority. That is the voice that gives you instruction and doesn't give you room to argue. He told Philip, he said, arise, go to the road that leads to the wilderness, to Gaza. When you that voice that just is instructive most of the time, when you hear it within you, the Holy Spirit spoke to you. And some of you hear it in prayers always. In fact, some of you you have been hearing it, but you have been doubting it, and that's the reason why you are and you hear it and tell God, No, come through dream. And to God, God is saying, If my spirit has spoken to you, that's enough. You know, one thing with God, as much as God loves us, He's a king, and that nature will always come to play. The will of the king is what finds expression. If God has spoken to you like this, you can't make him speak like this again. And need I remind you that you have to be very careful trying to force God to say, God, if it is you, speak. Be very careful. Because what you are about to do is you are about to bring, you are about to downgrade what he's doing from the spirit realm to the flesh. And in the flesh, Satan is master he can manipulate say god if it is you if it is you that is speaking to me let my shoe my my slippers outside when i go tomorrow let the slippers face the other side are you kidding me a cat can do that not even a demon a homeless cat that is running around in the night can pick the slippers and and then you wake up in the morning and go outside. Hey, I left my slippers like this. You know, this this, this must be gone. That means you have you have been sold to the flesh. And I tell you how many families and many individuals have been manipulated out of the will of God. Because when God spoke in your spirit, he expected that you should know that his voice is when when he speaks, he is Lord, and his word becomes law. Some of us have learned to follow God anyhow he does it. Whether you show a vision or not. Sometimes you are praying to go for a program many days and no vision, nothing. God will not even appear to you. But I've learned by reason of experience that the Bible says God acts for those that wait for him. Waiting on him is not just fasting. Waiting on him means staying until God speaks. Staying to understand the wind until it blows and then you move. So even if God doesn't speak to me till I get to the meeting, I'm relaxed. That's the reason why I tell pastors, I tell believers, I say, make sure you study your Bible. So that in case God does not come through prophecy, just preach the word and sit down. At least the word of God is still number one. Don't need to force yourself. Yesterday I went to preach somewhere and God was not talking. I, I preached the Bible and sat down. And then today that I prepared to go and preach a bigger sermon, when I went there, I started seeing names. I started seeing things in the spirit. I said, oh, this is how you want to move. Let's go. And we move like that. But you cannot, you cannot localize the move of God to a setting. There is no pattern. The pattern is there is no pattern. The pattern is like internet. It's real time. As it comes like that, when you plug on, that's how it is. Follow. So you're, somebody is sick in your house and then the Holy Spirit says, lay your hands on the person and you say, ah, how would I lay my hand on my mother? You are on your own. Oh. You are on your own. So number one, I said, God speaks through the Holy Spirit which produces the inward witness. Number two, God speaks through our spirit which produces the inward voice. Isn't it? The voice of your spirit is your conscience. 
the voice of your spirit is your conscience now the, the way of the voice of your spirit sounds that distinguishes it from the holy spirit is that it's usually suggestive or it gives counsel it will suggest to you but you will know that this suggestion is it this is it but it comes suggestively or as a counsel don't you think you should do this why because it's the voice of your spirit that's the voice that rebukes you people will say the holy ghost rebuke me mm -mm. the holy ghost doesn't rebuke he convicts there is nowhere in the bible that the bible says the holy spirit rebuked let me educate you again the holy spirit does not rebuke when you sin that is the voice is the voice of your spirit which is your conscience that rebukes you now the bible says in first john chapter 3 verse 20 that if our heart condemns us is it verse 20 or verse 19 if our heart condemns us speaking of your conscience the voice of your spirit it said just in case you fall into sin by mistake and your conscience which is the voice of your spirit condemns you it says god which is the holy spirit is greater than your conscience but many of us when that rebuke comes it is your spirit that is rebuking you why because your spirit has no affinity with sin is a new man in christ so if you commit sin it's very it's an unfriendly environment to it so it will react but in that reaction guilt and condemnation begins to come at that point satan has stepped in to manipulate but the bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in christ so he says if your spirit or if your heart condemns you there is an antidote god is greater that's why he says but if we confess our sins he is faithful and just you know what faithful and just means the only way i can just explain that verse is that the moment you say lord i'm sorry that's it In split seconds such that if satan comes one minute after that incident and comes to accuse you he doesn't have a legal stand in heaven so many of you need to you need to learn to be able to distinguish because when we begin to pray to find out the will of god for our lives when these voices speak you should know the character of the voices and you should know when god is talking to you let me tell you the truth for me i was called to ensure that believers are matured in truth that believers come to a point where they know god like they know their clothes that's my calling so we believe in the miraculous we believe in all these things but when we finish that let's come and teach them the basics of the kingdom so that their eyes can be enlightened because i tell you the days ahead if you don't if you cannot hear from god I hope you know satan has a lot of technology now satan what he does is he tries to mimic every new move of god everything that god produces satan tries to mimic he tries to copy huh so even dreams and visions satan can give now the bible spoke in jeremiah of prophets that see lying visions right yes so not every vision is from god satan can produce vision his technology harnesses it so if you wait to be led by a vision you are on your own or your own is that you want to be led by a man of god he can speak in the flesh in that moment that's the reason why i'm not ashamed to tell people hold on let me go and pray yes need to be led when the killings and all the violence started i went to god i said but god this is not what you said you said this year will be the beginning of the end of terrorism now you better say something though so that shame will not catch me because this is what i told them and then the holy spirit began to take me through scripture oh i like the holy ghost he's a teacher experienced no one teaches like him you would think that at those times he would just come through a vision and say my son no the bible says he will guide you into all truth so that you will have an he wants to bring us to a point of maturity perfection and mastery that you can look at a sister 
even though she's spiritual she prays in tongue and prophesy and you know within you no this one cannot be my wife yeah. I touched you, ba. <laughs> don't be don't be moved by those things. So let me tell you the truth. Don't be moved by those things. Or you see the brother praying in tongues, shaka taka 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 taka. You see, Kai, this brother is spiritual. They know they judge spirituality for face. If someone told you I was an apostle, if you see me outside, will you believe? No. God is spirit. Everything he does is in the realm of the spirit. You need discernment. You need to pick it from that realm. One of our sisters, she's here. I think a sister to her. They came to visit me one time and we were praying. And the Lord said to lay hands on her head. And when I laid hands on her head, I heard the, the, the beating heart of a child. And I said, Madam, you are pregnant with a child. She looked at me and laughed. But I knew what I heard in the spirit. I said, Madam, you are pregnant. She laughed. I said, Okay. You are pregnant. And this pregnancy will be a boy. So laugh at me now, but we'll see who has the last, last laugh. They called me in January this year and she said, That thing where you talk not true, it has happened. The Bible says, For we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Just the way Elijah's, Elijah's servant saw the cloud like the feast of a hand. And Elijah told the king, he said, get the up hands for I hear the sound. Meanwhile, there was nothing outside. If you don't train yourself from being sensual to being spiritual, you will see a clear sky and say there will be no rain and rain will fall. Because the things of the spirit are not understood through physical means. Just because the brother has a car and he's always coming to church and he's bowing his head when they are praying does not mean he's a child of God. You only get married to him and begin to regret. You know why I'm using the area of marriage and relationship? Because that's where we relate to most. And I tell you the truth, this, is, this simple principle is what I've, I've used. I've mastered it in my life. And I know that I know that I can never be deceived. Because I wait to hear what the Spirit says inside me. He said, Thou will light my lamp. The Lord God will enlighten my darkness. So when businesses are crashing, the Holy Spirit will tell you, invest in this business. He said, but God, somebody just did last week and he drowned. He went down the drain. He will speak again, invest. You know, most times he speaks one word. Go. He will just tell you, go. That's it. And if you want to be a man or woman of the spirit, you have to jump as soon as you hear that voice. And then in, at the time when businesses are crashing, you will invest. After investing, some of your friends, you know that they will laugh at you, so you even hide it from them that you invested. And then you begin to console yourself that at least I didn't put much. And then all of a sudden, overnight, bam! And you become a millionaire. Why? Thou shall light my candle. The Lord will enlighten my darkness. For by you, I run through a true. So you go to the hospital and you are pregnant. And they tell you, after all the attenata, Madam, we have to take you for surgery. There is a breach, this and that, this and that, and all of those things, and that, and that, and that, and that. Thank you. But I choose to believe the word of the Lord. As I'm talking, scan your life. Anything that looks like a wall or a limitation. Could it be that your light has, your lamp has not been enlightened? Could it be that your darkness has not been, has not been lit up with light? That's when the Holy Ghost will tell you, submit your CV in this place now. And you say, ah, but I submitted last year, they didn't call me. I was just checking, Pastor, I think Pastor was showing me the job that they called him for in NDLA. And I saw his number was 2019. Abi, 2019. So could it be that he applied since 2019? You know, one thing with God is sometimes truth before, when God, God tells you the truth, it comes from the realm of eternity. And my father will say truth before time seems like a lie. So God can tell you something in 2019. You do it and you look like a fool because the manifestation has been delayed. 
but only if you wait two years later job said all the days of my appointed time will i wait till my change comes it's not every problem that is a uh, uh, ancestral cause or ancestral no some of you is just that you should wait god wants he wants to teach you how to wait the bible says in romans chapter 4 verse 21 it says i'm being fully convinced speaking of abraham and he being fully convinced that what he had promised is able even also to perform he waited and he was accounted for righteousness the bible says he was strong in faith giving glory to god he waited he waited he waited i will tell you that there are three ways god answers prayer yes you can have it now no you can't have it it's not for you wait most of the times is this weight he uses and he tells you wait don't move when others are moving everybody you have all the connections to make this thing work and everybody say let's do this let's do this and you know there's one 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 satanic deception that has entered the church that it is one that everybody is talking about it that means he's of god who a generation can be wrong you don't know I'm talking to people this, this night. A generation, this one that everybody is talking about. That means it's from God. Though. Let me just do it now. Hey, the Bible says, if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That a wisdom can be hidden from the princes of this age, hidden from a generation. The Bible says, and he came to his own, and his own knew him not. An entire nation was wrong about the man Jesus you say that because people are saying it that's why it's of god brother sister go and pay the price to quiet in your soul and hear the voice of god in your spirit and when god says move when everybody says stop step out like gideon 300 men against an entire garrison of army or an entire army that's why without faith is impossible i tell you at every point there will be a registration of faith at every point every point god will wake you up one morning and say so a seed of five hundred thousand." you say no that can't be god well one of the things that satan has not been able to localize and i don't know why is satan cannot tell you to sow i don't know why his technology cannot catch that one you know why because satan is selfish it's his nature to be selfish and one of the ways that self dies is when you give giving is a nature or a character that is associated only with the nature of god for god so loved the world that he what gave that one satan cannot localize that technology say no that can't be god and that five hundred thousand was supposed to be the weapon that you use to break the backbone of poverty in your family but five is no no i can't know I, I, that means when God is ready to call you into ministry, you will not be able to move. Because when God calls you as a minister, everything will be looking opposite of what I'm telling you. You will be even be the one that will look for confirmation the most. Because God will tell you, I prophet to nations, and you are using touchlight phone. Where, where are the nations? He will show you dreams. You are driving expensive cars feeling less privileged then you wake up because the heat in your one room will wake you up i say how about god why are you lying now you, you know you can't tell god god is lying you just say how about god how about then the other one you say it in your mind and you don't know that god heard what is in your mind just the way god came to abraham and he told him no longer genesis 17 verse 5 no longer shall you be called abraham but you shall be called abraham New King James, for I have made you. Is that not wrong? I have made you. And the man doesn't have a child. So imagine how Abraham, do you know what it means? He called himself Abraham. He said, from today, told all his servants, from today, my name is Abraham. Father of many nations. I'm no longer Abraham. They start gossiping him. You know, that's, and that's what church folks can do. Say, they call himself Abraham. How many children? And from that time when God spoke, it took 13 years before the promise was fulfilled. So for 13 years, Abraham looked like a fool before men. 
just so that he can be right with God. I tell you, that's the problem with our generation. We, we, we are used to spectacular physical happenings. We are used to following the crowd. So when the crowd is wrong, we cannot detect. Our discernment has become too dim, too low, too dim. Because we have decided not to follow the paths of the Spirit. But that a man can stand against his own generation and say I hold on to what God says can I tell you something can I, can I give you a prophecy this one I won't say it directly but based on what I'm sensing and I'm not saying this because probably I saw anything online just saying this to so that you can decode wise people will go and decode Based on what I'm sensing, the next president of this nation will have something to do with the Southeast. Based on what I'm sensing. Period. The next president of this nation is going to carry a Davidic anointing. So one of the signs, watch, around that man, him and his cabinet, around him, there will be somebody with a name, David. Just watch. You know, the first seven years of this country, if you study the book of Genesis, you will just see everything that happened. The first seven years since independence, you will see everything there. And you know that the book of Genesis ended with Jacob and who? And his 12 sons, right? And so you see that those seven years ended with a man that was the military head of state. What was his name? Yakubu. What is Yakubu in Hausa? Eh? What is Yakubu in Hausa? Is it Jacob or Jacob or James? Is it Jacob or James? Is it Jacob or James? Is Jacob? Is Jacob? Even listen. Okay, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Even even the the translation in Hebrew if you check the translation in Hebrew completely, it's Jacob. Because the word in house and the word in Hebrew is almost the same. It's Jacob. And if you doubt that one, as at that time, how many states were in Nigeria? Twelve. I don't have time. That's, listen. These things, this is, this, this is the science of the spirit. This is how you can detect that things are happening. So if I'm telling you that the next, because God now wants to come and rule in Nigeria. I'm telling you. There's about to be a shift in this. I don't even know why I'm talking about Nigeria. There's about to be a major shift in every sphere. There's about to be a revolution. But it will not happen by protest. It will not happen by protest. It's going to be a stealth and a discreet strategy that God will infuse. It's not going to be something that will shake. No, 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 no. No. Revolution will not happen like that. It's going to be silently. And then it will eat up the whole place. So it's a Davidic anointing that is about to rest on the throne. I want you to watch. After that election, around that number one person, either him or his cabinet there will be somebody that either bears the name david or the interpretation of the name is david how do i know that the lord will enlighten my darkness i would have gone further but there's no need let me stop there there are things that shouldn't be revealed because prophecy is also giving the devil blueprint and map so let's confuse him amen are you ready to pray? 
we are going to pray and ask the Lord listen you are going to ask the Lord to activate every spiritual sense that is in you it's time for God's people to begin to hear him my people perish because of lack of knowledge many of you are struggling with indecision you know yourself as you sit down there but there is a better way that you can come into light express light express light where the awareness of all that God wants for you comes to you and then you move with such precision and accuracy as though you read it in a, in a calendar or on a paper wherever you are can you lift your voice and raise a cry to God Lord let's pray that Psalms 18 verse 28 light my lamp and enlighten my darkness lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray turn every darkness into light introduce your voice in my spirit and let it resound let it become distinct let it be distinguished let it become clear the Bible says the sons of Issachar were men that understood the times and seasons. And as a result, they knew what Israel ought to do. There were just 200 of them. Other tribes have 12,000, 22,000. They were the least among the tribes, but they were not disadvantaged because they had understanding of the times. That he will fill you with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding there's such a thing as spiritual understanding where you get accuracy and precision when you pray you know god is speaking you download the mind of god in prayer and you come out assured of what he says knowing that what he says he will do come on come on come on come on Come on, we are a prayer people here. We are a praying people here. Kabra kosia pala radabaya. Mambra tapala dia bakosha. Aria bosha paria talabage. Shata branda blakra telegreti de brenos. Same progression. Be your blessings and honor and glory and power forever. Come on, pray. Let your voice outshine every darkness in my life. Let your voice be distinct, just like the still small voice that Elijah had. Let your voice be distinct. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of consistent errors. I'm tired of living confused and in fear. He said the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The word of the Lord came to John the Baptist. That word can come to you. For the entrance of your world, give it light. Thou will light my love. The Lord God will enlighten my darkness. For by you, I run to a truth. And by you, I live over circumstances. By you, I live over situations. By you, I live over limitations. Yeah. 
listen the Bible says in Luke chapter 3 verse 1 he said the word of the Lord came unto John the Baptist in the wilderness verse 2 rather if you read from chapter 1 the last verse the Bible says he was in the desert he was in the wilderness till his season of appearing what brought his announcement and his season of appearing was the word of the Lord that came to him we need to learn to wait until the word of God comes to us some people have rushed rushed God rushed out and rushed into all kinds of decisions that has that has done so much damage to them can we pray and say Lord the grace to wait the grace to wait until your word comes because when that word comes it comes with light the entrance of your word give it light 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 that is the light that will make you run through a troop that is the light that will make you surmount limitations and John waited until his word came until the word of the Lord came can we raise our voice and say Lord the grace to wait I'm not in a hurry at all I'm not in a hurry is it about marriage is it about relationship is it about business is it about ministry are you praying believing God for your family and circumstances are trying to hurry you out the grace to wait he says stand still and see stand still and see the salvation of God be still and know that I am God come on raise your voice and pray there's such a thing as a grace to wait there's such a thing as a grace not to shift ground not to change up the scripture not to move to remain steadfast to hold on to God's word knowing fully well that faithful is he who has called you and he will do it Lord, I will not change. I will not shift until your word comes. No matter the pressure, no matter the circumstance, God promised you a job. God promised you that this year it will happen. And this is May and nothing has happened. The grace to wait. The grace to hold on. Hala branda braketele de bios. Shapranda brakele de bredius. Hila barada basia barada. Hello bro cinema. Yes to your will. Yes to your and in waiting you must learn to surrender to him the voice of God has been customized in such a way that it comes to those who expectantly and patiently wait for it that is why there has to be peace 
before you can hear his voice there has to be stillness because waiting on him is turning your entire attention to him knowing fully well that from him alone will salvation come from please lift your hands if you are here and you know Jesus is not Lord over your life I want to give you this opportunity if you know you are here you heard everything from the ministration of spirituality down to this message and you know that you have not opened up your heart to the Lord you know you are not born again or perhaps you have wandered far and you need to rededicate you need him to accept you again you need, it, you need to come to that place where you once enjoyed in Him. Wherever you are, while we sing this song, I want you to make your way to the front very quickly so that you can receive the life of Jesus again. All to you. All to you. I give it all to to join her please do it very quick I give it all surrender to him let him have all let him have everything let him have your life he wants to be in control your character your dispositions your decision everything he wants to be Lord tonight we surrender we give it all One more time, sing it softly. Soft. I give it all. I give it all to you. With your eyes closed, everybody, I want you wherever you stand to just begin to surrender once again to Him some of you the lord is telling me that the reason why you are confused or ignorant about certain areas of your life is because you have not given him those places you have not allowed his counsel or his opinion to count you have isolated those areas from him you make do with him handling other parts but these ones you have kept it away from him and until you surrender completely until the disciples went to Jesus in the boat and said, Master, carest not thou that we perish. They had to realize that Jesus was the only hope of salvation. And he rebuked the wind and there was calm. You can never know peace. You can never be delivered from ignorance until you surrender. The Bible says it gives grace to the humble. Wherever you are, make a commitment in your heart. Make a prayer. Make a prayer. My dear sisters in front, please stand. Tell her to just stand. I want you to just repeat this prayer after me. Your life is about to change. It's a fresh start, a new walk with the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I repent of my sins. And I receive eternal life I declare that you are Lord over my life both now and forever in Jesus name lift your two hands let me pray for you this lady wearing pink I see a very unusual presence of the Lord coming on you 
there's something that God will do with you. Father, I stretch my hands towards them and I declare that you will seal them with the Holy Spirit. I declare that their sins are forgiven. I declare that they are born again. And henceforth, may your voice resound in their spirits. I declare that they receive victory over sin, over Satan, over circumstances. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's a fresh start. Can we celebrate God for them? It's a fresh start. It's a fresh start. Listen. It's a fresh start. That's what the Lord is telling you. Okay? It's a new walk with Him. God is taking you to another place of intimacy. You will be so in love with the Lord that you cannot control it. In Jesus' name.